we have hundreds of thousands of people here, and I just want them to be recognized by the fake news media. Turn your cameras, please, and show what's really happening out here, because these people are not going to take it any longer. They're not going to take it any longer. The FBI has arrested hundreds of people in connection with the January 6th insurrection. But I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. Jacob Lang is an American hero. He saved two lives on January 6th. Both of those men have signed sworn affidavit saying that the only reason why they're alive is because Jacob pulled them out of a pile of being crushed and suffocated to death. Jacob Lang is still sitting in jail right now. Used to be in America, if you saved a man's life or a woman's life, you were considered to be a hero. But Jacob Lang did it on January 6th, two lives, and he's still incarcerated. So we need to tell that story. America, you deserve the truth. You deserve the full story. You deserve to view the historic event of January 6th beyond the censored lens of mainstream media. Hello. I'm Jake Lang, a 27-year-old political prisoner that has been locked up in solitary confinement for over 17 months. The footage you are about to witness has never before been seen by the public. It is the raw and uncut truth of January 6th, the day when free men and women stood unarmed against tyranny and were brutalized, beaten, and even murdered on the steps of our own capital. The patriotic event of the century where brave Americans came together to defend the Constitution and free and fair elections. So how did this uh, peaceful protest end up becoming violent? There was a peaceful protest at the Ellipse. It was one of, of, of many uh, peaceful uh, protests that had taken place across the country. Um, there was a call to, to, to continue the protest that day, to go down and walk down to the Capitol peacefully. Um, what happened on the way over is that that peaceful walk was hijacked uh, by all different types of groups of people with nefarious intent. Police are squabbling with protesters. Oh, there we go. And they just reached the Capitol again. The police who are in charge of securing the perimeter move aside the barricades and let the protesters or rioters or insurrectionists, whatever you're going to call them, a lot of people still in prison, let them in the building. How about the one guy? Go in, go in, get in there, everybody. Yes. Get in there, go, go, go. Nothing happens to him. What happened with him? People were, were funneled into areas of the Capitol that were either undermanned or that had defenses had been taken down, barricades had been moved by people like Ray Epps and a, and a bunch of other nefarious actors that day. There's a man called Ray Epps who was a longtime conservative activist. He was captured on camera at least three times, possibly more, encouraging people on January 6th and the day before, January 6th Eve, January 5th, encouraging protesters to storm the Capitol. Tomorrow, we need to go into the Capitol! Into the Capitol! <laughs> Is this guy going to be charged? Where is he? He was on the FBI most wanted list. Now he's not. Exactly how many of those present at the Capitol complex on January 6th were FBI confidential informants, agents, or otherwise working directly or indirectly with an agency of the United States government? We already voted. What have they done? Let's take it. Okay, we're in! We're in! Come on! We gotta fill up the Capitol! Come on! Come on! We need help! We're gonna fill up the Capitol! Move forward! Climb up over the wall! Get in those bleachers! 
There was the largest manhunt in American history conducted after this day, January 6th. We're still talking about it, as noted, a year later. And yet this guy is not only unidentified, no being an authority seems interested in the slightest in finding out who he is. Any FBI agents or confidential informants actively participate in the events of January 6th, yes or no? Sir, I can't, I can't answer that. Did any FBI agents or confidential informants commit crimes of violence on January 6th? I can't answer that, sir. Did any FBI agents or FBI informants actively encourage and incite crimes of violence on January 6th? Sir, I can't answer that. Allegedly, the story goes that a man dropped off pipe bombs at the DNC and the RNC. Um, our FBI has showed us a couple of stills of those individuals, and there has been nobody telling us anything beyond it. I live in D.C. There's a camera on every corner. Yep. Uh, the Capitol building, the White House, the most secure buildings possibly in the world. We're seeing Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan start to show that the FBI had some, of, some involvement um, in January 6th. We're urging supporters to go toward the Capitol building. What is your assessment as you're watching more and more of this information come out? Well, I have been watching, and I've been watching it very closely, and a lot of people are being treated very unfairly. This should never happen in our country or any country, what happened to them, especially when you look at the way the so-called other side is treated. But this pipe bomber or bomber, who knows if it was a pipe, who knows what it was, uh, they never found him. I've seen pictures of them and very clear pictures, and you know that they do have cameras, not just a camera, they have many cameras on every corner. And I would imagine they probably know who he was, and I guarantee he wasn't one of the people that were at that protest for the right reason. It was a protest. You know, the insurrection was November 3rd, the election day. This was a protest about a rigged election. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. All of us here today do not want to see our election victory stolen by emboldened radical left Democrats, which is what they're doing, and stolen by the fake news media. That's what they've done and what they're doing. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's theft involved. So who was capable of actually opening this locked door from above, which seems like it was a magnetic lock system and the door could be opened from a distance? That's the mystery. Who opened this door? Um, who, ha who had knowledge of how to open this door so that this gentleman could let people in? And the gentleman who actually was walking to the door and he signaled up and asked the person to open the door, he has not been arrested yet and he is not on an FBI wanted list. Broke through the police line and people are going in. The doors are open! Testers 
were then pushed up against the walls of the Capitol. The police who were defending the walls of the Capitol then pushed back against the protesters and a conflict ensued as a result. The truth about Roseanne Boylan, if people knew her story, would change everything about what people thought they knew about January 6th. Most of the violent footage that people have seen with actual protesters being violent or combative with police was around the West Capitol entrance where Roseanne Boylan was killed. Uh, they knew that people were getting crushed because while we're at the bottom of this pile, we're yelling as loud as we can, we're dying, we're dying, help, help. What you're currently witnessing is Capitol Police officers disobeying their oath to defend the Constitution and to protect human life. We have a scene right now unfolding on the West Terrace Tunnel entrance that people died in. It was an absolutely horrific, grotesque scene of police brutality, unrivaled in American history. We have thousands of people who witnessed Roseanne Boylan's death, 34-year-old woman from Georgia. She died in the hands of the Capitol Police. They pummeled her over onto the ground. They caused a stampede in which she got ran over. They pepper sprayed her while she was down. They put noxious tear gas in the atmosphere. She couldn't breathe, but she ended up dying in my arms. And may God rest her soul. The real fights that the news talks about in the media, where they drag the police officer down and they're beating the police officer and all that, they say the things about the police they shouldn't be saying, that was after they killed Roseanne Boylan. That was after they almost killed me. That was after they gassed an entire crowd. other people there that day, as you'll see in this footage right now, like Philip Anderson. He's a young black man from Texas who's a brave patriot who's come forward recently and signed an affidavit, court sworn affidavit, that, saying that if it wasn't for me, that he would be dead that day by the hands of the Capitol Police. This is just another story of the countless stories that are horrific from January 6th of people being shot with tear gas canisters, hit with rubber bullets, pummeled over the head with steel baton. There was a concerted effort by the Capitol Police today, that day, to absolutely punish the American people and hurt them, and not to defend human life, and not to usher them into the building and take selfies like we've seen in some different parts. On the West Terrace Tunnel entrance, they were there to hurt people. They weren't fighting back, we're getting crushed. What they did was they pushed more and more people on top of us. They were beating and beating and beating. Everything they said about Roseanne Boylan from the very beginning is a lie. They straight up killed her. It was murder. And I was holding her hand as she died, all right? And everything she felt, I felt as well, because I was right there next to her at the bottom of the pile holding her hand. There's nothing more devastating than watching men and women unarmed be killed by our own police officers in this country. Roseanne Boylan was seen being beaten by a policewoman while she was laying there seemingly unconscious. Here's how you know the Capitol Police are evil. When Roseanne Boylan is lying there on the ground, dying, motionless, not moving at all, a Capitol Police officer beats her over the head with a baton. And now the Capitol Police Department has ruled that that was objectively reasonable. I think they said objectively, I mean, they said something. Yeah, they ruled that that was reasonable. I'm like, hold on, how's it reasonable to beat a dying woman over the head with a baton?
So Lila Morris walks free and Roseanne Boyland is no longer with us. I always said to myself since day one, uh, before I knew about Roseanne Boylan, what would make Trump supporters, who are normally back the blue, former military guys, attack police officers or seemingly be very hostile towards police officers? And it wasn't until months later that I discovered the story of Roseanne Boylan and the fact that we're actually watching a woman being brutalized by a police officer and being crushed by a crowd. And when they tried to pull her out of the crowd, they were being tear gassed by police. So police was preventing actual Trump supporters from rescuing multiple people that were at the bottom of the pile. That is the real story. And if people knew that, that there was a chance that police possibly killed another protester, not Ashley Babbitt, but Roseanne Boylan, and that the reason that these Trump supporters were violent or were acting hostile towards the cops uh, was because they were trying to save people's lives, then that changes the whole narrative. It was like, it was like something you'd see out of a movie, like in a war scene. And it was, it was a really terrifying experience. If it wasn't for Jake Wait, Lang, I would definitely would be dead. She was murdered by the hands of the Capitol Police, and this was witnessed by thousands of Americans on the steps of our own Capitol. You know, I've watched Roseanne Boylan, the life leave her body, and it haunts me to this day. Every night that I'm in solitary confinement, I see her. I pray for her, I pray for her family, and her memory will never be forgotten. Her sacrifice for this country will never be forgotten. There are approximately 15 men who are incarcerated to this day in DC Gitmo or one of the other jails that are holding January 6th defendants. And I'd say at least half of those were nonviolent. They didn't even attack police. Uh, some of them threw objects at police or were hostile towards police and are being charged with attacking police officers. But 15 people currently sit in solitary confinement since January 6th who witnessed what happened to Roseanne Boyland, who all say they were trying to help her and others and save their lives that were underneath the pile of protesters that were on top of Roseanne Boyland, but were getting tear gassed and hit by police, anyone that tried to save these people's lives. Jesus. Oh, 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 o
Christian, both hands on the back. They enticed them, they entrapped them, and then they attacked them. We're gonna beat the fuck out of that guy! The cops are beating the fuck out of that guy! They're shooting into their own people! Ashley Babbitt was a protester that was shot and killed by Capitol Police Officer Michael Byrd. And in the video, it's very clear that Babbitt was carrying no arms and she posed no threat as she climbed through a window. Yet this officer chose to shoot her point blank. In most jurisdictions, the use of deadly force is justified only under conditions of extreme necessity as a last resort, when all lesser means have failed. Deadly force was not necessary to deal with Ashley Babbitt, an unarmed veteran and woman who posed no imminent threat. You can see this creepy hand with a gun in it to the side pointing at the door, almost laying in wait for someone to shoot. Ashley Babbitt's death was unnecessary and Officer Byrd should be held accountable. But the Capitol Police found Byrd's actions were, quote, lawful and within department policy. So, decorated Air Force veteran Ashley Babbitt is dead and Officer Byrd is called a hero. That is the upside down America that we live in today. You have the fake news right after the f insurrection uh, reporting within days that one woman was shot by police, but it was her fault. Another woman had a drug overdose, and two other guys had cardiac arrest because uh, it didn't explain why. Um, we're fast forward a year and a half till now, and so much more information has come out on those people's deaths, and that's documented. Video, um, Freedom of Information Acts that were, that were filed, that got more information out, and the news has, the mainstream media has not yet gone back to retract what they said originally. So we got someone on the ground right now. 
passed out, getting CPR done. They can't get anybody in here, and the cops are throwing flashbangs into the crowd. They're trying to save this guy's life right now. It wasn't like they were flesh banging, banging these guys that were walking in or even like up right on the perimeter. These are two guys that were pretty far from the Capitol, but just happened to be in the path of a flesh bang. I was wrong. I thought that guy was causing problems, but he's not. Uh, I think that man probably died. I think it's So no one ever talks about the mainstream media, these two guys, and how they really died. If you Google their names for the rest of time, unless it's changed and we get the narrative changed, it'll just say that they had cardiac arrests at a Trump rally. The mainstream media actually started a rumor that, well, that one of them tased himself to death. The cop grabs him and throws him back. See, they watch. He tries to reach in and pull him out. The cop grabs him and throws him back into that corner. Nope, you stay right there. We want you where we can beat you. And then what happens from there, as you can imagine, gets thrown back into the corner and they proceed to beat him. You see the one guy in the yellow right there who's reaching over and beating him with a stick. The other riot cop to the left reaching over and beating him to the stick. Now he's cowering in the corner down on the ground, covering up trying to reduce the blunt force trauma. That's rage. The officer with the white shirt at the, the foreground, the, the bottom right, he's got this baton and he just keeps hitting over and over and over again. So Joseph, I'm, I'm seeing this, this officer in the white with the baton uh, hitting uh, dozens of times. I don't know if he's trying to target one person, uh, but it looks like he's trying to inflict damage on someone. That, that is correct. He is without question inflicting damage on Victoria White. Look, she's getting maced right now. She's asking him to stop. Um, she is uh, bleeding right there. You can see it on, 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 on the white uh, piece of uh, clothing behind it. There's blood all over it. Um, she is obviously in distress. She is obviously defenseless. I mean, to the point again where I look at that. This, look, look at that. This is a grown man. That is a collapsible abs, asp right there. That, that device is supposed to be used as per DC police protocol. You see her face right there. She's struggling to break windows in emergencies. And it's supposed to be used below the shoulders uh, for self-defense um, or to disable somebody with a weapon. And it's only supposed to be used above the shoulder. There he goes punching her. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, that, that, that that's an animal. There is also video documentation of Jake Lang trying to save the life of Roseanne Boylan. But because he was preoccupied with Philip Anderson, um, a bunch of other people pulled Roseanne Boylan out. And there's video footage that I'm still trying to obtain that I know exists to this day of Roseanne being worked on by Trump supporters. It's very emotional footage, desperately trying to revive her, doing CPR on her, trying to um, give her resuscitation where when the cops whose job it was just stood by watching, tear gassing them and beating them. So there's footage that exists that people have not seen, and when they see the, when they see this footage, it's going to really help change the narrative. A bunch of President Trump's supporters are still rotting in jail cells, still being denied bail, not brought to trial yet, denied their basic rights as American citizens, abused, tortured, denied their basic rights as human beings. And don't be surprised if these psychopaths who run DC try keeping some of these patriots locked up for all four years of this fake installed Biden regime. The Obama administration. 
and they'll do it just for the sick thrill of it. Jake Lang, who we spoke to not long ago, is one of those political prisoners being held in the D.C. Gulag. He was arrested almost immediately after January 6th, so he's already been rotting in there for a whole year now. And these worthless courts have repeatedly refused to let him out on bail while his trial is pending. Keep in mind that right now in D.C., more than 90% of criminals are let out with no bail whatsoever. They're just let back onto the streets. In D.C., more than 90% of criminals are let out with no bail whatsoever. They're just let back onto the streets. Where, of course, a lot of them continue committing crimes because, hey, why not? In New York and in San Francisco and in Philadelphia, mentally ill vagrants are left totally unchecked until finally they just kill somebody. And keep in mind that last summer, thousands of Antifa and Black Lives Matter domestic terrorist goons assaulted police, targeted them for assassination, threw Molotovs at government buildings, lit fire to occupied police precincts, burned down churches, destroyed staple corner stores, raped people, assaulted people, caused $12 billion in damage over the summer of 2020 in just a three month period in the name of a career criminal home invading thug. And sure, many of them got arrested, but almost all of them were released immediately without bail. Was January 6th different from other protests around the country that had occurred previously that spring and that summer? And if so, how? Following the death of George Floyd, there were, from what I have calculated, 537 different protests or riots where property damage was done and or other crimes were committed. Of those 535 plus riots, that happened in a 10 week span. So there was approximately 50 or more of them happening throughout our country on a weekly basis with that, with over billions of dollars in property damage being done. This is one day, one afternoon, where there are a handful of officers as opposed to over 2,000 officers alleged to have been injured. And on this one day, there is about a million dollars in property damage as, the, as compared to over $2 billion. So as far as a breakdown, this is one afternoon, one day, that ultimately was not what it was intended to be, that spun completely out of control. We begin tonight with a nation already on edge in the coronavirus pandemic as protests turn violent across America. During 2020, there was up to two billion in damage due to the riots that swept the nation. That ain't a riot, what we're seeing right now in Minneapolis. How I characterize it, this is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it is not, uh, it is not generally speaking, unruly. We must ask ourselves. What is the hidden agenda between the difference of treatment from the January 6th political prisoners to the Black Lives Matter and the chief of rioters? Principled anti-fascist. I argue to you tonight, all punches are not equal. Morally, it says it right in the name, Antifa, anti-fascism, which is what they were there um, fighting. Listen, there's, you know, no organization is perfect. There's some violence. Any reasonable person would say we shouldn't be destroying other people's property, but these are not reasonable times. Well, thank goodness for the looters, man. And please, show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. I don't care that much about statues. Throwing it into the harbor? People do what they do. The scene behind me is one of multiple locations that have been burning in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Do not get it twisted and think that, oh, this is some something that has not never happened before and this is so terrible and where are we and these savages and all of that this is how this country was started people get mad most of 
the major movements in American history have started at the grassroots level and at some point have turned into direct conflict with American government. So remember your history before you judge your present. And if you see anybody from that Why have I been held for 17 months with no bail? Well, the kid gloves have been handed off to Black Lives Matter and Antifa protesters for firebombing buildings and assaulting police officers with no regard for human life. There's an obvious bias against conservatives in America. They tried to burn down Washington. We took in federal buildings. They were terrible. Every Democrat city was on fire and nobody says anything about it. Antifa and BLM were causing such problems, including death. You have to have equal justice. It's very, very unfair what's happened to this group of people. No one can tell me that if it had been a group of Black Lives Matter protesting yesterday, there wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been treated very, very differently than the mob of thugs that stormed the Capitol. We all, we all know that's true. And it is unacceptable, totally unacceptable. I would absolutely give them a pardon. The, the punishments if things are don't out work of, out fairly. Punishments are out of proportion to the crime. Out of proportion, like 20 times out of proportion. These people are being persecuted. And the other ones, when they, they caught people, who killed people, they want to give them the minimum sentence. They, they're out there fighting for a minimum sentence. No, it's a very unfair situation. Black Lives Matter, uh, Antifa and others these radical left people. I mean, you have the vice president trying to bail everybody out of jail, but they weren't in jail very long. It was pretty easy to do. Yeah. And getting the bail was very easy. These people are in jail in a horrible, disgusting, dirty jail, so bad that the court system, which is very left, is angry that people have to live like this. And some of these people are not guilty. Many of these people are not guilty. What they've done to, to these, and in many cases, patriots, their soldiers, their policemen, what they've done to them compared to what they've done to the other side. You know, you have to have equal justice, and this is an equal. Do you think that uh, your client, Edward Jacob Lang of Narrowsburg, New York, is a political prisoner? I think that under these circumstances, under these charges, the only reasonable conclusion that anyone could draw from the arrest to being transferred in the middle of the night without notice, not being able to see his family, having to filter and drink water through a sock in a hole where he has no human contact or sunlight for months at a time, uh, being denied access to his attorneys, having a beard that is so thick that has not been shaven in six months without what, being denied a haircut. The only reasonable conclusion that you could come to on these facts is, yes, these men and Edward Jacob Lang are being treated as political prisoners. And as a result of that, he has spent the last several months since uh, late January in the D.C. jail, where yes. he still is currently. That is correct, under harsh conditions. But now we're harassed on a daily basis here. They send... Um prison guards in to watch our units that are particularly aligned with liberal seated causes like Black Lives Matter oh, and they target us and, they, and what they do is they try to psychologically you know just afflict us in any way possible they change the rules on us all the time they wake us up in the early morning hours on September 18th when uh, they had that rally pro January 6th rally for us in Washington DC they woke us up in the wee morning hours and they told us to grab our mattresses and they marched us through the jail they didn't tell us where we're going how long we're going to be there why we're being moved and this is psychological warfare tactics to try to break down people's resolve and to keep them constantly in a manipulated state it's horrendous the way we've been treated so, um, Jake, uh, no doubt you're going to probably face some repercussions for even doing this interview with us today. Are you a little worried about that? Um, I'm, you know, fear does not live in the hearts of patriots, and 
you know, it's time for the American people to band together and to stand behind the Constitution and to really support the January Sixers because we were the, the front line. This call is being terminated by the facility. Uh-oh. Yes. All right. Interesting. <laughs> Someone didn't like that conversation. Jake Lang, who appeared here on this program recently, is different. Jake Lang is trapped in the D.C. Gulag. Jake Lang is put in two weeks of solitary confinement every time he meets with his lawyers in the name of stopping COVID because he remains unvaccinated. And while this country lets criminals rampage with impunity, Jake is threatened with years or even decades of prison. You know why? Absolutely nothing normal. Every single aspect of this is unusual, and the treatment that these men have endured is needs to stop. And it is wholly unconstitutional and completely unreasonable in every sense of the word. My fellow Americans, the documentary that you just witnessed attempts to go back and show you what happened both before, up to, during, and after the J6 political protests in our nation's capital. If you have no justice for one, you have justice for none. And that is exactly what's happening in our country. So I ask you, I plead with you, to go to our website, j6truth.org. Find out the truth about J6. We, are, we will continue to keep on posting. We will continue to keep on getting the truth out. We will continue to keep on exposing the DOJ, the FBI, the Biden administration, for all the cover-up and the corruption and the fraud that they are committing on a daily basis concerning what happened on J6. Please donate generously. They need your help both in prison, their families need your help back home, and they need your help to find good counsel to fight back against this corrupt government that we have today. I thank you for your time and your concern, and, and I would like to read a letter I just received today from my son, Jacob Lang. Hello, Faja. Another glorious day to be alive. What was it that famous president said? We have nothing to complain about except for the source of complaining itself. Staying grateful and praising God, even in these valleys and hard days, makes all the difference in the world. He desires our love and worship even when the odds are stacked against us and the whole world feels life is crashing down. Especially then, Spending 20 plus hours a day in this bed in this small cell, I try pacing and working out at least two hours a day and standing to worship, but it's cold as hell in here. So I tend to be under the blanket reading or listening to the gospel music or sermons on the radio. Some life, huh? Where I'm currently serving, serving time for a sentence I didn't commit. It's like being in a desert where Christ staved off the devil and where angels ministered Christ. So this is my desert. I must cling to my faith and sustain by the word of God. Deliverance is possible by the blood of Christ. No, it is assured. I hope that America is ready for my declaration. It's about time someone showed up and climbed up the old apple tree or chopped it down like Washington did. If God is with us, who can be against us? I miss you and love you, your son. All the best, America. Now that you have been armed with the truth, the truth shall set us free. Please share this video with as many people as you can text and email. Also, donate to the Gifts and Go, where 100% of proceeds go to advertising this documentary with TV and newspaper ads. We cannot let the brave patriots of January 6th sacrifice be in vain. We must fight for those who stood up to protect this great nation from the current unconstitutional regime. Joe Biden says no amendment is absolute. This is rhetoric of a tyrant who has no respect for our republic or our God-given rights. I know the Founding Fathers and many incredible January 6 patriots who are willing to bet with our lives that he is wrong. We battle this spiritual warfare with the love of God and the faithful understanding that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So we will never back down and we will never surrender to tyranny because fear does not live in the heart of a patriot. May God bless you and uplift you and give you liberty before death.